All right, for lesson two for the second part of our unit, we're gonna focus on uh, the average rate of change. We're gonna talk about using those intervals to describe increasing and decreasing functions. We're still focused on those key features. So it's really the same objective. It's just that we kind of did the, the legwork last time and now we're gonna apply. Do we know how to use set builder notation? Do we know how to use interval notation? Can we find the slope of a graph? All right, so, or between two points at least. And so we'll kind of go from there. So let's focus first on what are positive intervals and negative intervals. Positive intervals and negative intervals. So the positive intervals are those parts of the graph, those, those, um, those values of x, where the outputs, the y values, are above the x-axis. The negative intervals are the ones that are below the x-axis. All right. So in this particular picture, Let's recognize that there's a spot where they are neither above or below, but they are positive, the y values are positive when you go from negative infinity at less than x to negative three, all right? And when you go from three less than x to positive infinity, all right? So when you are using that set builder notation, it's going to look like so. If you're using interval notation, you're going to say from negative infinity to 3, exclusive, and, oh, I'm sorry, negative 3, and from 3 to positive infinity, again, exclusive there. Those are the parts of the graph where the, where the outputs are above the x-axis. It's below the x-axis from negative 3 to positive 3, or if you're using interval notation, you would say, I'm sorry, if you're using uh, set builder notation, you're going to say from negative 3 is less than x is less than positive 3. But what you'll notice is that at those values, it is neither above or below. At negative 3, it's not above the x-axis, it's not below. At positive 3, it's not above, it's not below, it's actually right on. So where is the graph neither positive or negative? At the x-intercepts. All right, again, these are sometimes referred to as the zeros of the function, all right? So where the output is zero. Very important things. So let's take a look at this picture. Where is this graph positive? Where is this graph negative? And where is it neither positive or negative? Well, from here on, it is positive. From here back, it's negative, although we're going to go left to right. Always, always, always. So, negative, zero, positive. Negative, the graph is negative from negative infinity until negative three, parentheses. Where is it zero? At x equals negative three. Where is it positive? From negative three to infinity. All right, again, if we're gonna do that as inequalities, We'd say x is uh, uh, negative infinity is less than x is less than negative three, or three is less than sorry negative three is less than x is less than positive infinity. Again, you can also write that as if you're using inequalities, you'd write it like so. And so there's set builder, there's just inequality form, and then there's the interval notation. Obviously, identifying the zero where it's neither is really critical. So being able to see that in the graph or identify that through the equation is going to be critical work. Let's take a look at this picture. Increasing versus decreasing. So there's positive values where it's above the x-axis, negative where it's below. But then there's increasing. So this is where the y value is getting bigger. All right? So it's not always where the y is positive, it's where the y value is getting more positive. So from left to right here, we can see it's going up, it's going up, it's going up, it stops. It's going down, it's going down, it's going down, it stops. It's going up, it's going up, it's going up, and then, you know, there's an assumption here that there's arrows here. This is a cubic polynomial. And so what we're going to show is that this is increasing from a certain set of x values, all right, from negative infinity all the way to that value of that local maximum. And then it's going to decrease from this local max, it's not the actual max, it's not all the way to infinity, 
to this local minimum. It's going to be decreasing from left to right it until it gets there. And here it's neither increasing nor decreasing, but then there, from this point on, it's going to be increasing, increasing infinitely, kind of forever. So we want to be able to assess when is it increasing, when is it decreasing, and kind of go from there. So let's take a look at this example. That one didn't have good x comma y's for me to work with. We'll see that at the end. For what values is this function, g of x, increasing? Well, here the y is, I know it just goes down forever and ever. Here it's at you know, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then it goes down to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, down to... So we see that for this part of the picture, it's increasing. It's going up. And then for this part of the picture, it is decreasing. So you don't have to label the picture like that, but what you want to do is you want to say increase, and you want to say from negative infinity all the way up to 0, x is equal to 0. And you want to say it's decreasing from 0 all the way up to positive infinity. These are the x values. For what values of x is the y getting bigger? Ah, that's a little crazy messed up because we're not going to say it goes from, we're not talking about the range here, we're not going to say it goes up to 2. We're going to say it's increasing, 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 it's not increasing anymore at 0. And then from zero on, it is decreasing, decreasing, decreasing forever and ever. So we're always referencing an x interval here. All right? When we're talking about intervals, we're talking about x values. We're talking about the x values. For what values is this function increasing? Well, it's going to be increasing after the vertex, if I'm looking from left to right. It's going to be increasing from negative 1 to positive infinity. It's going to be going up. Remember, this negative 1 is in parentheses because it doesn't include negative 1. At negative 1, that's the minimum, right? It's not increasing or decreasing. So we want to make sure that we keep those straight. Tell me where it's decreasing. You tell me. You tell me where it's decreasing in interval notation <clears throat> or set builder notation, whichever notation it is that you'd like to use. So do this one for me on example 6. And then let's kind of do all of these. This kind of puts it all together, domain, range, intercepts, where it's positive, negative, where it's increasing, decreasing. And so here, they've got some weird values. Okay, these are approximated, so we're going to do our best with it. The domain is all real numbers. I'm going to write that as negative infinity to positive infinity. <clears throat> what is the range? Well, here it's going to go all the way up to positive infinity. As I snake this down, it's going to go all the way down to negative infinity. So it's, again, all real numbers. We're going to go y values are negative infinity to positive infinity. The x-intercepts, I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> All right. The x-intercepts are located here, here, and there. Can you see all three x-intercepts? Again, this is a cubic equation, so or a cubic function. And so we have um, the x-intercepts happen at, uh, at x equals negative 3, at x equals 0, and at x equals positive 3. So we're going to have negative 3 comma 0, 0 comma 0, and 3 comma 0. The y-intercept only happens at one spot there. It only happens at 0, 0, where x is equal to 0. Where's the graph positive? It's going to be all of these. All of these. All right, so where is that? That is from negative infinity up to negative 3. And then it is from 0 up to positive 3. And that's the only part where it's positive. Where is it negative? Well, it's going to be all of these parts that are below. It's going to be from negative 3 up to 0 and from positive 3 to infinity. Where is the graph increasing? I'm going to erase this. Increasing. If you were tracing this from left to right, you would go down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 down. So where did you go up? You went up from this minimum to that maximum. From x is negative 1.73 to x is positive 1.73, exclusive. And where is the graph decreasing? You've got two spots. You do that, and then we'll talk about that at the end. So hopefully, you're able to think through all of those things, tying both lessons together,
fun domain, range, intercepts, positive, increasing, negative, and decreasing so that you can connect those dots. All right, there's just a little bit more. This is kind of uh, that, that first big chunk that I wanted to split into two parts. The last thing deals with slope, all right? And this is not new information, but maybe it's a new way to think about slope. You are used to doing the difference in y's divided by the difference in the x values, right? The difference in y divided by the difference in x. You're subtracting the y values, you're subtracting the x values when you have two separate x comma y's on a graph, all right? The average rate of change over a, an interval is taking the x comma y at one point of the interval and the x comma y at the other point in the interval and then doing the difference in y's divided by the difference in x. Obviously, you'll be more accurate the closer those x comma y's are together because this right here could be a line that describes the slope between these two points. All right, but the slope, if I'm looking over here, is like this. The slope over here is like that. The slope over here is a line that looks like so. And so if we narrow our selection there and we can see a line between two x comma y's, then we might be able to get a little more precise idea of what the slope looks like at that interval. And so average rate of change is just a fancy word for slope, all right? That's how slope is introduced to you in unit five of algebra one, but it's been many moons since you've done that, and so it's gonna be a little bit difficult maybe to kind of cross that back into our, our algebra two uh, idea. So what do the average rates of change over the intervals blah, 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 indicate about the given function? So let's talk about the, the, um, the intervals here. So from here to here, and then from here, oh, I'm sorry, from negative 2 to 0, from 0 to 3, and from negative 2 to positive 3. So here's what we're going to do. When I say from negative 2 to 0, I'm talking about at negative 2, the x comma y, at negative 2, has an output of 4, and at 0, we have an output of 0, all right? So let's find the slope for these values. The difference in y's divided by the difference in the x's is going to give us 0 minus 4 over 0 minus negative 2. This gives us negative 4 over positive 2 gives us negative 2 for my slope. Now, the fact that that slope is negative should give us a clue about that rate of change. All right? Let's look from 0 to 3. All right? From 0 to 3, what's happening here? Well, it's, it's going to look like so. From negative 2 to 0, it's going to look like that. But here it's going to look like so. Notice how those lines are going different directions. Notice how they're slopes. One of them is negative and the other one is going to be positive. So from 0, um, uh, we have 0, 0 to 3, 9. When I do the difference in y's and the difference in x, I get 9 minus 0 over 3 minus 0. I get 9 over 3 which is three, this is a positive value, all right? So this is a negative slope, which means on average from point one to point two, the graph is decreasing, decreasing. It doesn't talk about positive or negative, it's decreasing. Because it's basically positive the whole time except for this point right here, all right? That's on, on the axis. On the second part right here, this is increasing, right? The second part is increasing over that interval. So what's happening from negative 2 to positive 3? Well, from negative 2 to positive 3, at negative 2 we have an output of 4, at positive 3 we have an output of 9. What's happening there? Well, on average, it's a positive slope. So on average, it's going to be increasing. I can see the picture between these two points, connecting those two dots, that this is going to be a positive value. When I take my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, I'm going to have 9 minus 4 over 3 minus negative 2. I get 5 over 5 equals a slope of 1. So that's positive. I can tell that what's happening there is that this is over that span. It's increasing. All right, It's getting higher when you started here and ended there because the, the output value is higher than the 4. The 9 is higher than the 4. And so I know that that's going to be increasing. So a negative slope means it's decreasing. A positive slope, or a positive rate of change, means it's going to be increasing over that interval. All right. 
you you go ahead and you try this one. You do. And when I say by do, I just mean do it. If you're wrong about the slope, then you're wrong about the slope. But this one's actually gonna be pretty easy because you've got some help there in the picture to make sure that you do it right. But use the slope to figure out what happens on this interval, on this interval, and on that interval. And then let's talk about the rate of change, rates of change for those separate things. Do all three of those, and then we'll have a conversation about it next time. All right, that should bring us to the end. I'm actually gonna go back to that slide. But hopefully now you're able to see those key ideas um, for uh, increasing, decreasing, positive, negative, x-intercept, y-intercept, domain, and range, uh, and of course, average rate of change over an interval.